The real story of farmer bro, Martin Screlly. He's been caught a morally bankrupt sociopath, a scumbag, a garbage monster, and everything that is wrong with capitalism. And those were some of the nicer names for Martin Screlly, who at one point became the most hated man in America. Who was he and what did he do? You'll find out in my video today, the real story of farmer bro, Martin Screlly. This is Fraud Explained. To enjoy more videos, subscribe to my channel and click the notifications bell, or else I'll be looking into you too. The list goes on and on for all the reasons Scarelli has captured the attention of millions. Back in 2015, the farmer CEO scandalously raised the price of Daraprim, a drug commonly used by people with HIV AIDS from a somewhat affordable $13 to an absurd $750 per tablet. Screlly continued to further enrage people by greedily paying $2 million for the only existing copy of a Wu-Tang Clan album and whining and dining with the worst of the worst in the so-called deplorable that was the night before President Donald Trump's inauguration. Testing the limits of public outrage, Screlly even got himself banned from Twitter in January 2017 for harassing Teen Vogue writer Lauren Duca. Truly, if you googled the worst people, his face would easily come up. Though these acts are deplorable, these weren't the charges that brought him down. What was he convicted of in the end, and where is he now? Stay until the end to find out the whole story of farmer bro, Martin Shkreli. In the court of public opinion, he was already found guilty of being a douchebag a long time ago. Shkreli brought this upon himself when he formed Turing Pharmaceuticals and bought the rights to market Duraprim, a toxoplasmosis treatment used by AIDS patients. The drug is patented and has no generic alternative, so Shkreli saw the opportunity and hiked the price of the drug from $13 to $750 per tablet, more than a 5,000% price increase in one night. What enraged the public even more was his defense of his actions, saying, there's no doubt I'm a capitalist. I'm trying to create a big drug company, a successful drug company, a profitable drug company. With this annual treatment for some patients jumped to hundreds of thousands of dollars, causing poverty, suffering, and even possibly death. Before he became the most hated man in America, however, Martin Shkreli had humble beginnings. On March 17, 1983, he was born in Coney Island Hospital to Albanian and Croatian immigrant parents who both worked as janitors in Brooklyn. Being a precocious child, Shkreli learned about stocks from a neighbor named Marty who would play chess with him in the 90s. From there, he started his big dreams. I kept thinking even as a young kid, at 10 or 11 years, I could have a company as big as Eli Lilly or Merck. Later, at age 12, he bought his first stock shares in the computer company Compaq. He continued to do this well into his teenage years, even buying shares of Amazon when it went public in 1997. While other kids could easily remember the batting averages of their favorite Yankee players, I knew everything about all the public companies, Screlly recalled. Screlly insists that his years in Hunter College High School were the reason for his success, though he dropped out before he could graduate. He later donated $1 million to it in 2015, which the locals didn't appreciate and called blood money. CNN Money reported that acquaintances from high school said he was captivated by Wall Street and would put in insane hours to learn its ins and outs. After dropping out of high school, Screlly started working on Wall Street at age 16 with an internship with Kramer, Berkowitz & Company, founded by CNBC's Mad Money host Jim Kramer. And this was where his life of infamy began. He didn't wait until 18 before testing the law. In 2000, he told Kramer's fund to short a biotechnology stock. True enough, the stock fell and Kramer's fund profited. The well-timed short caused suspicion and triggered an SEC investigation, resulting in no proof of wrongdoing on Shkreli's part. So good, so far. Having a taste of success and controversy, with a business degree from Barrack College, he started his own hedge fund, MSMB Capital Management, 
where he developed a reputation for using a stock gossip website to savage biotech companies whose shares he was shorting and was accused of filing FDA complaints to make a company he bet against look bad. Because of this, he was sued multiple times. Still, surprisingly, this wasn't why he faced the possibility of 20 years in prison. The charges he was brought against in the end will surely make you steam even further. What are they? And where is he now? Stay until the end to find out. Truly representing the worst aspects of the 21st century, Shkreli took advantage of social media to show his even worse side because his $2,700 contribution to Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign was refused. Worse was his harassment campaign against critics and journalists, including Taylor Lorenz and Lauren Duca. In August 2016, Shkreli harassed Lorenz saying, just generic poor trash and pretty ugly. Add poor to the mix and you've got a total loser. He did worse to Duca after she rejected his direct message invitation. Not to be outdone in his platform of choice, Shkreli photoshopped Duca into his profile picture and changed his cover photo to a collection of photos of Duca. Duca reported Shkreli's cyber-stalking to Twitter and got his account terminated in January 2017. He then sent his online minions to continue the harassment with death and rape threats, some of them even coming on Christmas Day. Duca later recalled. Amidst it all, Shkreli remained unapologetic, saying in an interview with the New York Post, I think it would help her to be a little more intelligent and a little less dramatic. Not done yet, Shkreli further added fuel to the internet flame wars by demonstrating his abundant greed in coughing up $2 million for the only copy of the Wu-Tang Clan album Once Upon a Time in Shaolin an album that the group stipulated could not then be sold in any form until 2103. To stick it to everyone, he played the album for the first time over live stream on YouTube. Nearing the end of 2015, otherwise known as his year of being the most hated man in America, Shkreli bought Calo Bias Pharmaceuticals in November. He planned to do there what he did before, despicably raising the price of a much needed but limited drug. This time, a drug used to treat Chagas disease. The US Senate Special Committee on Aging began investigating Turing the same month. In December 2015, Shkreli was arrested on suspicion of securities fraud. He stepped down as CEO of Turing and then live streamed himself for five hours on YouTube. He was fired from Calobios the same month. Shkreli finally faced the music on August the 4th, 2017, when he was found guilty of three counts of securities fraud. He faced up to 20 years in prison, but remained optimistic because he was found not guilty on a key charge that he had looted Retrofin to make payments on behalf of his hedge fund. He was so confident that he would be found so innocent that the jury and prosecutors would have to apologize to him. His bravado finally fell in March 2018 upon being sentenced to seven years in prison. Much to the enjoyment of people online, Shkreli cried, sobbed, according to some accounts, as he begged for your honor's mercy, pleading for leniency from a federal court judge. Though many people hoped he would go down for price gouging, Shkreli's prosecution was for years of alleged securities fraud. According to United States Attorney Donahue, for years Shkreli told lie after lie in order to steal his investors' money, manipulate the stock market, and enrich himself. He will now pay the price for repeatedly violating the trust placed in him by his investors, his employees, and the public. It remains a priority of this office, together with our law enforcement partners, to identify, investigate, and bring to justice criminals like Shkreli. What about the price gouging, affecting, and one might say, stealing from people in dire need? Well, that's just another day in business, dear viewers. Did Farmer Bro receive just punishment for all that he did? Let me know what you think by commenting down below. I'll be responding to all comments in the first hour. Farmer Bro isn't the only price gouging story in pharmaceuticals. Watch my other video, The Rise and Fall of Valiant Pharmaceuticals, to see the story of the once highest value company in the Toronto Stock Exchange, who's now trading at a couple of dollars. Stay tuned, stay educated.